It's been about a year since I switched from PS4 Overwatch to PC, and realistically it's probably the best decision I ever made. The skill ceiling is a lot higher, there's much more competitive integrity, typically people communicate more often, and there's actually potential to take your skill or gameplay to the next level, whether that means as a competitive player or as a content creator like me. I don't find myself alienated from the rest of the community, and often I can collaborate with other streamers to elevate my content. It's just not as lonely. That's the best way to put it. Today, I'll be going through mental and physical changes you should implement to improve after swapping a PC and diving into settings as well. Full disclaimer, I don't think console players are any worse than PC players. Every PC player I've personally met who made the switch either hit their previous rank or hit an entirely new peak. Top 500 console players are not platinum on PC, I could promise you that much. Mentally, you have a lot of improvement to make. You need to come to terms with the fact that you are not as good as these PC players who have been geeking out on keyboard and mouse for years across different titles. Honing their FPS skills on games like CSGO and TF2 ahead of time. Controller will just never be as consistent as keyboard and mouse. There are so many variables that have an effect on that, like analog drift, input lag, sticky buttons, and a shorter battery life. Let's not forget that generally speaking, using a controller and depending on inconsistent aim assist or preset aim styles is actually more difficult and less unique to the player. The biggest tip I have is amp up your speed. The way you think, react, play, aim, peel, reposition, synergize with teammates, and coordinate ultimates is so much faster than on console. Personally, that was my biggest obstacle. Console is a lot slower, less reactionary, and especially less tank play. Tanks on console just don't know how to make space or take space from you the way they do on PC. So you'll never really be sitting comfortably in one position. Another huge mental tip, realize that your character might be horrible in the current patch or meta. Although Overwatch fundamentally benefits one-tricking hero in lower ranks, as you'll continue to climb, you'll find that meta-heavy compositions are simply match-defining. Some heroes, in synergy with others, are just better. For example, I've been playing less Ash than usual since Hanzo is just so strong at the time of recording this video. Putting your ego aside and adapting around the meta should never be a bad thing. You might be good at your one-trick, but the existence of some compositions just wins games. As I mentioned in the disclaimer, you should never compare your console rank to your PC rank. It really is a marathon, not a sprint. Fine-tune your gameplay and take the time to fix the mistakes you were previously making on console. For example, my biggest mistakes were standing still, jumping too often, hard scoping on Ash, using dynamite off cooldown, and generally I was too toxic for my own good. That goes into my final tip. Focus on yourself. It's so easy to get caught up with how your teammates are performing in any team-based game. Play to your strengths, review where you go wrong, apply those lessons in the next game. Just like on console, there are going to be throwers, win traders, bad players, and toxic players. If you behave well and become a better teammate, you'll absolutely climb. Let's talk about the physical. When I first switched to PC, I just felt uncomfortable. Clunky, if you will. You aren't in resting position with your controller on your lap the way you used to be. You need more space to really move and reposition as you continue to play. You'll notice that playing for longer is actually more difficult. So take the time to find your comfort zone. Starting with, of course, keyboard placement. It's all about finding the right tilt. Some of the best hitscan players in the game tend to tilt more. I'm unsure if that really has anything to do with the character that they play. Whereas, of course, you could have your keyboard set straight if you prefer that. At the end of the day, focus on which angle causes the least amount of hand cramps for you. Think about how you'll be resting your arms and if you have more of a wrist or arm aim. Next, your posture. Your posture will absolutely have an effect on gameplay. If you're leaning in, you'll probably find yourself more focused, but your eyes might dry out and your back won't appreciate it very much long term. Loafing around and leaning back into your reclined chair is pretty distracting. Having your legs up like a goblin isn't so stabilizing. Find a cheaper ergonomic chair that's comfortable and won't have you shifting posture as much. As for the equipment you might need, I'm probably not the best person to ask since I've only ever used the same keyboard and mouse. I'm using the Logitech G Pro series if you were wondering. Links will be in the description below along with all my other hardware. Some important things you might need to consider when you're picking equipment, it's all pretty expensive so take your time, there's no rush. The size and weight of your mouse is far more important than the flashy lights. You might not need 18 different mouse buttons because Overwatch is a fairly simple game where two will be just fine. Now for the keyboard. You can opt for a larger, more traditional keyboard, but ultimately getting a 75% keyboard is going to save you both desk space and mouse space. 75% basically means the outer right side of the keyboard is cut off. All of those keys that are usually unnecessary unless you use hotkeys. The RGB lights are actually pretty distracting and obnoxious over time. They might be pretty, but that's entirely your decision to make. Monitors are also very expensive, but worth the investment based on the quality of your PC. The hertz that your monitor runs at, or refresh rate, will only elevate the FPS cap and your gameplay. It's going to be a huge improvement from the set 20 to 30 FPS that you're running on console. Think about the borders of your monitor. I don't exactly like them too small and modernized, but definitely not too thick. 
I'd rather a flat monitor over curve when it comes to gaming, since double monitor setups are out of the question. Next, decide on the size of the monitor. I prefer a 24 inch just because it won't be too difficult to jot my eyes across the screen. Of course, the response time of your monitor also matters. Nowadays, it really isn't too hard to find a quality 0.5 millisecond to 1 millisecond monitor. Response time is the time that it takes to shift from one color to another. Lastly, think about the base of the monitor and how much desk space it might consume. You need the desk space for not only the cleanliness of your setup, but also to max out mouse pad space and ultimately room to move your mouse. Finally, the PC. I'm just straight up the wrong person to ask since I also need an upgrade. Thankfully, Overwatch really isn't a taxing game and there's settings to help you run smoothly. The luxury of playing on console is you don't have to worry about any of these things. It's such a primitive way of enjoying video games without the nitty gritty specs and price tag. In conclusion, equipment doesn't matter too much. Upgrade over time, there really is no rush, your graphic settings could shift as you continue to upgrade. Let's move on and take a look at settings. Since when I switched to PC, I had the help of many other content creators to optimize the game for both my setup and my specs. Most notably, graphic settings are a game changer. Run everything on low. Save yourself the trouble and the frame drops. You're gonna run graphics quality on low and in the advanced, you'll set your render scale to 75%, texture quality low, and literally everything else to low or off entirely. Sure, your game might look like Roblox, but it'll be smooth sailing. There's no better feeling. I wish console had these options available. Ask for your FPS, set it to custom, and find an FPS that's suitable to your specs and monitor. Because my PC is fairly good and my monitor's refresh rate is 165 hertz, I have my FPS capped to 185. Other streamers have told me to cap at 20 above your refresh rate. Lastly, match your resolution to your monitor's resolution and refresh rate. Next, we'll be discussing control settings. Based on your mouse, you can map buttons to create less pressure on keyboard skill. My biggest struggle when I switched to PC was really finding my way around the keys without looking, almost like playing the piano for the first time. Don't be upset if you have a hard time the way I did. It's so normal. I have my punch and push to talk set to mouse buttons because I have a hard time stretching my fingers to V and T at mid-fight. I really don't like limiting movement for other functions in the game. Your primary ability and ultimate, or E and Q respectively, are really accessible from WASD. The next hardest key would be crouch or left control. Depending on the hero you play, crouch spamming is really useful, so consider remapping that if you're struggling. Heroes like Widowmaker and Tracer depend on it more than D.Va, for example. However, it should be mentioned that heavy loading abilities and cooldowns to your mouse is not always the best idea, especially since the buttons are fairly small. Don't be afraid to practice on keyboard and depend on it more. You'll absolutely swipe other keys on accident or fat finger ultimates, but it's part of the journey. My last biggest tip on PC, you have the luxury of using an effective push to talk or push to mute. Absolutely practice better communication through push to talk and limit useless comms and clogging them with randomness. A couple of months back, I made a PC Ash Guide where I briefly spoke on sensitivity settings that were relayed onto me. A huge mistake I made when I first swapped was starting too fast. I thought I could keep up and simply because it felt snappier, I was under the impression I was playing well. That turned out to not be the case and I met a brick wall in diamond. Continue to adjust your sensitivity as you play, never get too comfortable because it'll never be perfect. Right now I'm currently running 800 DPI and 5.2 sensitivity across every single hero. The next biggest step for some heroes would be finding a comfort zone between scoped and unscoped sensitivity. I prefer a 1 to 1 ratio where they match in speed. I truly recommend watching the Ash Guide for more information on that, that link will also be in the description. If you'd like to see an entire settings guide for every single hero, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll make that happen. Consistency and comfort between characters is really important since you want to be a flexible player that your team can depend on. To close out this console to PC guide, let's talk about gameplay and things you could do to really become the best player you can be. Communication is key. Being an in-game leader and ranked is more useful than you think. Talk to your teammates through voice and text chat. Decide on compositions ahead of time and comfort picks. Don't talk over others. Dictate strategy on a fight-to-fight -fight basis. Combine ultimates and abilities. Your team will trust your judgment if you speak to them with decency. If your game sense is better than theirs and you know how to vocalize that, they'll usually follow. Your attitude actually matters. I mentioned earlier in the guide to focus on yourself. I want you to stay humble after switching from console knowing that you're at an immediate disadvantage mechanically, be patient in your improvement and make friends along the way. On PC Overwatch, your improvement will actually be rewarded unlike on console. It's important to continuously improve and never settle. So review your replays and take notes. One of the most contrasting differences between PC and console is the report system. Respect it, it'll be your best friend. The PC report system is actually monitored and it works. A huge tip I have is including the replay code in the report itself. If someone is jumping off the map or hacking, include the replay code in the message. Another big difference is the text chat. On console, since crossplay, you literally have to AFK and get tabbed out 
for using text chat. On PC, it's seamless and might help you get your word across if someone is out of voice chat. Use it appropriately so you don't tilt your team. A bad habit on console is hyper focusing on medals and stats. It's so much easier to farm damage on console since you have all the space in the world. Your existence and ult economy can often mean more than farming stats. Speaking of which, your positioning is so much more important. Where you are at at every point of the fight will change the outcome. On console, you can perch and really have to reposition. PC is more dynamic and requires attention to pressure points, whether you're holding high ground, holding wide angles, flanking, pinching, peeling for your backline, or holding hands with your main tank. Another bad habit as a console player is holding ultimates. The game is unfortunately defined by ults. Use them. Combine them, cycle alt economy, and track the other team's alt economy every single fight. Make sure you're communicating that. Baiting abilities and movement is going to make you a better player and give your team the edge in the mid fight. For example, baiting a Widow Grapple or Ash's Coach Gun forces linear movement. Forcing recalls from a Tracer can be predictable if done right. Baiting Zarya Bubbles is another example where your tank line can capitalize on those mistakes from the other team. Or Baptiste Immortality Field. I think you get the gist of it. My closing comment really is just to have fun. PC Overwatch feels like an entirely different game Game where you can really test your competitive integrity and ability. Learn new heroes and engage in a thriving community, switch up your playstyle, and find a different approach. It's a great way to enjoy yourself and get hooked to the game we all know and love. If you enjoyed the guide and would want to see more, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're here right now, listening to the end of this video, thank you for watching.